Welcome to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. Now, here's your host, Lisa Condit. Good morning, and thank you for listening to us. I hope everybody's having a great weekend, and we are definitely feeling festive over at the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts. Today, I am here in the studio with Sean Patrick Hopkins. Sean, how many different A Christmas Carol productions have you been in? Uh, This is... Uh, I've done it one other production other than the Hanover Theater. I did it down at Trinity Rep one year uh, after I finished college. But this is my this is my fourth Christmas Carol with the Hanover. Oh, and it's going to be so fabulous, everybody. Sean plays the role of Bob Cratchit. He does such a great <laughs> job. And we were just reminiscing about some of the previous year's productions and some of the cast members. What brings you back year after year? It's it's like a family here. It really does become like a family. It, everybody just really gets into that holiday spirit and it's a lot of uh, a, a lot of friends a lot of people that you get to know over the years and uh, when you're spending this time between Thanksgiving and Christmas together it's such a it's such a family type time and a really festive time so everybody comes together you know we'll bake cookies and bring them into rehearsal Aww. and really you know it, it just uh, it's <laughs> nice to share those to share those kinds of things and the story itself when you're getting together with people and telling this story it really really kind of it brings you together in a in a nice way oh absolutely and I will say it is feeling very fezzy wig everywhere that the <laughs> cast of a Christmas Carol goes I think you've already worked your transformation on good old Scrooge there and he just has to bring out the bah humbugs when he's on stage. I think so. I think we've got him. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's Jeremy's second time with the production as well. That's right. Yeah, it's Jeremy's second time. It's my first time working with Jeremy. Okay. he's, He's a great Scrooge. He is. He is. And so Troy, he does a great job too at keeping the tradition in A Christmas Carol, but also bringing something new every year. Yes, he does. And so what are you doing right now in rehearsals? Right now, we are, we're kind of putting the pieces together. Mm-hmm. We've, put a, uh, we've worked a lot of the individual scenes and the individual songs. And now uh, this afternoon, we're, we're kind of stitching them together, putting all the, the in-between parts. And they were just, we were just working with the kids this morning. We did the Cratchit scene oh, fun. Um, with the Cratchit family. So it's, it's nice. There are a couple... Uh, a couple of kids I've worked with before and some new ones. And uh, the same Mrs. Cratchit that I've always worked with, Annie Karens, which oh, she's is a lot great. of fun. She's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so we had a little little kid time this morning, and we'll, we'll do some more this afternoon. And I remember you guys work a lot on your dialect, right? Yes. So can you give us a little bit of a snippet of what that's like? What do they tell you, first of all? Well, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot in the vowels. Mm-hmm. Uh, the... The, with the British accent, a lot of the O's are more rounded, and that's, and that's a that's a really specific difference between uh, American English and British English that our dialect coach tries to bring out because it's uh, it's hard for for a lot of Americans to to find that sound, but it really it really makes it sound authentic. Oh, absolutely! And also, a lot of it is with kind of the music of the language mm-hmm. and the rhythm of it, and that uh, that really enhances enhances the accent. Well, and you're doing something really fun and really new for us this year, too. I know you were selected to be the narrator for the upcoming show, the Boston Pops Holiday Pops Concert. That's generously sponsored by the Hanover Insurance Group. It's coming up December 6th right away, and you're actually going to be in costume and in accent, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Ooh, I, I, how did that come about? Well, uh, Troy asked me to to do the to do, do the narration for the pops, and I I said I said I'd love to. So Absolutely. it sounded like a really great opportunity to uh, to work with those people, to work with Keith Lockhart uh, and the whole pops orchestra. And then I was driving home uh, after rehearsal that day, and I said I was just thinking about you know different things we could do, and I said what if it was Bob Cratchit doing this. And I, yeah. and I looked into it a little bit, and this, uh, the piece Twas the Night Before Christmas was actually written about 20 years before A Christmas Carol was written. So oh, how interesting. It's kind of conceivable that Bob Cratchit might have read this story to his kids, or, you know, it, it, it existed in that time. So wouldn't it be cool to, to see Bob do that 
with the pops. Very cool. And so have you been in rehearsals with them or how does that work? No, I will I will kind of be rehearsing on my own right now. They uh, they sent me a recording of their orchestration, which is beautiful. Of course. Uh, and I will go meet with them that day before the performance and I'll, I'll meet with Keith. I'll get to meet Keith that day and he'll kind of talk me through the specifics and uh, the different timing of, of certain phrases and different moments. And then we'll just do it that night. And that is the joy of being a professional actor, right? That's right. You're going to show up and just get it done. That's how we work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots and lots of preparation before you get to that day. Absolutely. I'll be listening to that recording. I'll be going over all the, the words uh, oh, absolutely. Of, the, of that poem. And... So you're a really great example of a success story for an actor, I would say. How did you get started with all of this? I started when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. My, uh, my, uh, my high school drama teacher was uh, really just an inspiration to me. And he he kind of saw something in me. And I, I was taking a, an acting class, kind of in junior high, we, we took all the different artistic classes with whether it's art or music or theater. And he asked me when I was a, a freshman in high school, he asked me to audition for uh, the musical coming up and it was West Side Story. And, uh, and that's one of my, that's become one of my favorites, oh, yeah. uh, for, partly for sentimental reasons, but also it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. Oh, and the dancing in it is incredible. Oh, absolutely. So uh, had you had any training in dance before? No, I hadn't. <laughs> uh, and I didn't do too much dancing in that. I yeah. did a lot more singing, which I hadn't done much of. I mean, I, you know, you sang at church growing up and my, my father played the guitar as I grew up and I, I, grew up learning to play the piano so sure. um, there was music in the house but um, but not a whole lot of formal singing in any way so that's kind of how I got started and then I continued my studies in college and just uh, I've been very fortunate to, to work since then. Absolutely just out of curiosity where did you grow up where did you go to college? I grew up in Rhode Island uh, down in the westerly area and I went to college in Boston at Northeastern University actually right next to uh, Symphony Hall, where the Boston Pops are, are it's located. It's all full circle, it does. isn't it? It all it? ties together. It's incredible. That's fabulous. So what's your favorite part of playing Bob Cratchit? Oh, gosh. Um, I Part of it is working with the kids, mm-hmm. working closely with them, because there's, there's a real, there's just this innocence and joy that they bring to it mm-hmm. that um, you don't always get when you're working with adults. Um, you know, you Oftentimes you do, but sometimes, you know, if you're working with professionals, it's it's more, you know, about the work and, and kind of getting that done. But they, you know, this is very new to a lot of them. So there's there's this discovery and this joy that they bring that uh, that is really infectious. And it's fun to work firsthand with that. Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite scenes from A Christmas Carol is the dinner table scene. Yes. I think it is so beautiful. It's so touching. And truly, every year, the family that's gathered around the table mm. feels like a true family. Yes, it does. And we just we just worked that this morning. So it's uh, it's it's really special because I, I, I love Bob. He's just such a... He's such a positive person, and he really finds the the good in everything. I mean, he he works for Scrooge, and he gosh, Scrooge <laughs> pays him next to nothing, and keeps him treats, cold. He does. It <laughs> won't even give him a piece of coal to put on the fire. But he gets home, and you know they have their Christmas dinner, and he raises a glass in honor of Scrooge, and he sees this goodness, and you know the fact that he allows him to. You know, to make a living and provide for his family as as meager as that is, but he's grateful, and I and I think that's the mm. thing that the Cratchit family kind of embodies is that um, is that gratefulness, and mm. they just they kind of take joy in the little things. They don't have much, but they really make the most of what they have, and what they have is each other, and that's Absolutely. and that's really the kind of the whole message of it. They love each other. They really do. It's true. Yeah. I knew somebody who was a member of the Cratchit family on stage one of the years, and this young man always referred to the other cast members in the Cratchit family as his family. Yes. To me. Yeah. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really funny. But, you know, we have we have some interesting cast members this year. I know that Tiny Tim is a superstar in the making. Yes, he is. Yes, <laughs> it is uh, Troy's son, Carter. Troy's um, son, Carter. We yes. cannot wait to see him. Oh, he's great. And I've watched him grow up. We have, yeah. Yeah, How old is he now? He is, gosh, is he, I don't know how old he is, six or seven? 
think he's six or seven yeah. now. Yeah. Perfect age. He right? really is. He really is. And he's having a ball because, I mean, he's he's grown up seeing it here Absolutely. and there. And I'm sure hearing it from his father a lot. <laughs> I, am, I am quite sure that the Siebel's household is all a Christmas oh, carol. Oh, I'm all sure. All November, December. <laughs> really he, all year. But and he's seen a lot, of, a lot of rehearsals. He's been in a lot of them over the years. <laughs> and he's a fun, fun kid. So I he can't sure wait is. to hear him and see him in this story. I can't wait to see the rest of the Cratchit family in action. And of course, the new things that Scrooge will be doing with all the different spirits. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait to see him myself. So everybody stay tuned. We are going to take a quick break and then we will be right back to continue the conversation with Sean Patrick Hopkins, our Bob Cratchit from A Christmas Carol. Now back to more of Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater and your host, Lisa Condit. Good morning. And once again, we continue our conversation with Sean Patrick Hopkins, our Bob Cratchit from A Christmas Carol. Welcome back. Thanks, Lisa. So we were just talking a little bit during the break about some of the amazing cast members. It's a really great group of people. And it's, you know, as I said before, it it becomes your family. And it's good to see the familiar faces uh, that you've seen in years past. And it's great to meet new people and uh, some that you've, that I've known before. It's, it's great. There are, there are people I've, uh, I've done other plays with and uh, I've worked with in uh, commercials and uh, even my fiance's in the show this year. Oh, your fiance's in this show. Has she been in the show before? She hasn't. (gasps) No. So it's exciting. It's, it'll be nice to work together and spend the holiday season together. So what role does she have? She plays Lucy, who is in oh, the uh, yes at, at Fred's party. She's one of the uh, the game players. How fun! Yes, and just so that our whole audience knows, just because you make it into a Christmas Carol one year does not necessarily mean that you are selected for another year. Troy does have everybody audition. It's and true. It gets more and more selective every year. It really does. Yes. So your fiance is Lucy, which is the darling of the show. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then we've got your onstage wife, Annie. You talked about her a little bit. Yes. And I know she's been doing it for a while, but she has a lot of work for the rest of the year as well. She does. She keeps really busy and she does, uh, she does a lot of theater. She does a lot of voiceovers. It's funny. Uh, we are actually both... Um, you can hear us both on the radio for with a commercial for the Boston Museum of Science. We <laughs> I just, heard this. Have I've you heard, heard this it? commercial? Yes. I wasn't sure if it was playing yet. <laughs> we d- we just recorded about a month ago. But there's a there's a male and a female spot, and I ran into her after I had recorded mine. She was coming in to record hers. So I thought, what a small world. And in a couple of weeks, we'll be starting rehearsals for a Christmas Carol. After how that. fun! Yeah. You know, one of the things that I enjoy about a Christmas Carol too is that the cast is so varied, not just by age. Age. There are lots of men and women in this cast, but there are talents that are brought out. Mm. Like I remember being surprised, but it really adds something. Troy always selects a fiddle player. Yes. So this year you were you were talking a little bit about that. Yeah, Andrew Crow is our fiddle player, and he also plays Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Oh, perfect. Uh, and he's great. And I I worked with him actually uh, a couple years ago during the summer with a Johnny Cash show uh, out in Pennsylvania, and I was uh, I was playing the piano and he was playing the fiddle, and he became a good friend of mine. And then he got hooked up with the show last year, and uh, and he's back again this year, and he's a great he's a great talent. How fun. And so that fiddle player, they have a really good part in Fezziwig's party. Yes. And that's a really great scene because if you haven't seen the show before, it's an enormous production. It is. It really is. The set is amazing. The costumes are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And everybody is singing and dancing and moving around the stage. And our choreographer, boy, she must be very busy. Oh, Elise is great. And she puts together a a really joyful number. And that's, you know, that's what the Fezziwigs are all about. It's just the joy of Christmas and, and sharing that with your friends and family. And they're all, you know, clinking glasses and dancing and singing and uh, the music is so much fun and the organ is a big part of this production as well that's one of my favorite parts about coming back here truly it's amazing because 
you don't really realize all that the organ can do until you see it in a production like A Christmas Carol. And it starts really with the pre-show concert. And, okay, concert might be a little bit of an exaggeration, Hmm. but it is about 15 minutes or so of appropriate music to get everybody who's coming into the theater in the mood for whatever the production is. It is. And it, it amazes me how many different sounds come out of that one machine and are produced by one man. I know. That is amazing. You know, there are more pipes in that organ than there are seats in the theater. Is that right? Yep. There are over 3,000 pipes. So one for every person that goes to the theater. (laughs) But it's everything from the church bells, like the tolling Uh of the bells, to the horse's hooves Mm clip-clopping on a sleigh ride, to everything that you would imagine in a very dramatic organ. Yes. You know, and the organ adds such a air of mystery and kind of impending gloom of Scrooge doesn't change his ways Mm. and very pivotal parts. So this musical, it's interesting because there are some really dark parts of it, but then it's balanced by that light, joyful, fezzy wig feeling. Mm. It really is. You get all the aspects and you see, you know, kind of the the potential consequences of if Scrooge stays on this path that he's on um, of what the world could become. And it's it's not a pretty place. But then the transformation that happens, and I think that's where a lot of the joy comes out of. And you, you see it build up in these scenes right. that he sees with the fezzy wigs and with the Cratchits and all these joyful moments kind of build up within him. And it, it builds to his transformation. You know, I heard an interview with Charles Dickens' grandson talking about oh, wow. the story and how he was talking about how, you know, Scrooge really has obviously a transformation, but it's a gradual transformation. Mm. And the way that Charles Dickens wrote the story and the way that Troy has adapted it, we all really like Scrooge and we start to really like him and pull for him. I'd say within the first couple of scenes, right? You do. You see a glimmer of of what, you know, what could be. And you just, you're rooting for him, I think. You are. And I think that going back to his past, Hmm. you know, it's very important. You start to really understand how did he start to, how did he start to turn a little bit? Sure. Come on back, Scrooge. Come to the bright side. (laughs) (laughs) You do. You see, you know, when when somebody's young, a lot of things can happen where they kind of close off to the world. If you lose a close loved one or you know things happen uh that that make you turn off emotionally and Mm -hmm. some something significant has to happen to to open back up again right the other part of this particular production that i think is so fabulous is we talked a little bit about how there are very dark parts of it you Mm. know obviously when scrooge is in the graveyard looking to see whether it's him that's dead and Mm -hmm. buried in the ground without anybody at his funeral you balance that with sheer joy and there are so many musical numbers in this particular production i know it it makes it completely different than any other production out there and people have said it is the most spectacular production of a christmas carol in all of new england because of the sets because of the costumes because of the music what have you found as far as the actual amount of singing and dancing in this production versus others that you've seen or even been in sure it's i I think it it really, I think what this production captures is this really authentic feel because all the music that we use is true to the time. Mm -hmm. So these are all classic carols Mm -hmm. from, you know, the mid 1800s and well before that. So these, this, all this music could, did exist in Dickens' time. So it, it lends this authenticity to the show. And I think the way it's worked in, it's, it's more, it's more of a play with music, mm-hmm. even though there are these big musical numbers. It's not in the traditional musical theater style where mm-hmm. characters suddenly break out into the song to tell the story. Right. It happens like we like we talked about in the in the Fezziwigs. They're just they're having a party, and at the party, everybody sings and dances. Well, and even on the streets of London, mm-hmm. this takes place on Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, and so you can tell that. The people on the streets of London, they're feeling festive. They're singing carols, and they're carols that we recognize. Like, I love the way Ding Dong, Merrily on High sounds yes. when the cast members are singing it. It's mm-hmm. just amazing. Those are some of the most fun. And, and the, the musical numbers are great because a lot of them, uh, the whole cast takes part in them. Mm-hmm. And, and it kind of, um, a lot of them act as uh, transitions from mm-hmm. one scene to another. So you see people milling about on the street and, you know, seeing each other on Christmas Day, like you said, hanging wreaths, decking the halls, like yes. like, like it says in the song. So it's it's great. 
it's great to interact with the other actors at that point and to just get that big sound from everybody singing and really see so much happening on stage. Oh, absolutely. Because I think Troy was telling me that there are tw- over 20 cast They're members. About 30. There are over 30 yeah. cast members in this production. So when everybody's voices are all together, mm. It is so powerful and so beautiful, whether the mood is more somber or whether it's more joyful. Absolutely. And there's some great harmonies in some of the arrangements oh, that they absolutely. have. And w- with all the voices on stage, it's really, it's a beautiful thing. He's one of the most creative, talented people. Worcester and the Hanover Theater, we're very lucky to have mm-hmm. him. And I he agree. does. He puts together a nice cast so that everybody feels good. I love this time of year because everybody is focused on the holidays and everybody is busy getting everything ready. (laughs) And I think it's so wonderful that this year we're able to share some of that feeling that you're bringing to your role as Bob Cratchit to the Boston Pops concert, the, the Holiday Pops concert on December 6th, again, generously sponsored by the Hanover Insurance Group. I can't wait to see how that all works out. I think it's going to be fun and new and different. Are you familiar with the story that you're going to be reading? I am. I've heard it. I've heard this <laughs> a million m- times, many times, but I've never performed it or, or, you know, spoken it in public like this. So I'm, I'm excited. And I've never done anything like this with an entire orchestra behind me so that's going to be so fun it'll be thrilling and so you know new this year we have a couple of different packages some woo card packages check out our website everybody it's thehanovertheater.org where we actually have some packages that involve a backstage tour with troy our ceo and president also of course the director of this lovely production (laughs) and how often do you have access as a member of the general public to the person who's in charge of the theater and in charge of this production to take you around and show you backstage all how the how the props work, how the set is changed around, what the costumes mean, ask them questions about the music. That's phenomenal. It's a beautiful theater. This is one of my favorite theaters to work in. It's really good to hear that. We <laughs> love working with you too. And so everybody, please come and see us. Check it out at thehanovertheater.org, and we will see you at the theater. Have a great day, and stay tuned for more.